Hey, I just finished this, Dying Inside by Robert Silverberg. A few minutes ago, I like to do these videos hot on the tail of when I actually finished the book. And Silverberg, one of my favorite science fiction authors, and this is considered his opus, his most well-known and most critically acclaimed novel that he wrote. He wrote, who the hell knows how many novels Wikipedia knows, but I'm not gonna look it up, and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of short stories. He was prolific. This is the hit. This is his Lord of the Rings. So yes, of course, it is a very good book, but is it the best Silverberg? No, it's not. Not at least, in my opinion, of the books that I've read. I understand why it's his most popular. It's very accessible. Simple premise. A man is born with the ability to receive mental transmissions from people, but not to send them. So he's a one-way psychic. He can read the minds of the people around him. And what begins as a very potent ability loses its bandwidth as he ages and as he encroaches into middle age, into his early 40s, he begins to lose grip on the power. The novel is a story about him attempting to come to emotional terms with his, what he feels to be the inevitable complete loss of the ability, and also a retrospective on how the psychic ability impacted his development and how it impacted his relationships with people. The basic premise of the book, or basic conceit above and beyond, what if a guy was psychic and then became less psychic, is would being a psychic be a gift or a burden? And what would life be like if you kept it completely secret, if you told nobody? Would you be able to have normal relationships with people and be a normal, functional person if you had this secret ability? And how much of an advantage would it actually confer? There's this narrative trick that Silverberg uses repeatedly where Selig, David Selig, which is the name of the protagonist, will allude to, or the narration will allude to, something that happened in his past that was a major event, or refer to a character that you haven't been introduced to yet, and then uh, later on in the book that detail gets filled in, so it's kind of this leapfrogging, hopscotchy type narrative that covers his entire life from young childhood through adolescence, and then there's multiple romantic relationships and friendships. When I was reading it, I kept flashing back to um, this book, and I, I didn't actually plant this book here, it just happened to be right there on the shelf. Uh, this is the book that was forefront in my mind. I assumed that Silverberg must have read it uh, soon before sitting down to write Dying Inside. The similarities, I think, are more than superficial. Uh, it's the same, he, the, uh, Selig is this sort of neurotic, Jewish, uh, very solitary, very lonely man who is adrift in all of these anxieties and doubts, and it's very sexual, very sexually graphic, and there are the same kind of, not as heavy, but there, there still are these, these kind of touches, these overtones of, of uh, incest throughout the book, which is, you know, obviously part of Portnoy's complaint, famously. Um, and I, I think it's the, the, the comparison is strong enough in my mind that I wonder if it was meant to be an explicit homage to Roth. Dying Inside is not nearly as funny a book as Portnoy's complaint. But it, it structurally, it works kind of the same way, and it has the same sort of feeling. I mean, obviously the protagonists are, are they have a very, very close resemblance. But above, above and beyond that, it's kind of a commentary on, ah, this is the most cliche thing to say, but it is a commentary on kind of modern alienation and urban life and the life of the solitary man, um, the life of a misfit in society, in the culture at large, in his own affairs, uh, alienated in his sexual relationships and alienated in his nuclear family life. One thing that might turn you off to the book is that there is a lot of racial content in the book and not all of it, in fact, none of it has aged all that gracefully. Most of it, I think, is the fact that it was written in 72 and it was written with this 
style of you're listening to the internal monologue of a neurotic man and um, also you're privy to the, the internal monologues of the people that he encounters and there's this there there are a couple of, of characters especially one character who's a black character who you get his his internal world that is just pure racial rage uh, white hate um, uh, racial indignation and it's a really broadly drawn character and I'm sure there were people in the world who who resembled this character but it, it leaves a little bit of a taste in the mouth and there's a couple parts of the book like that where it's hard to tell how much of it is kind of literary license how much of it is a time capsule piece of you know the the reality is in the 70s this is how people talked and how much of it is a little bit of a, a sharpened hard edge from Silverberg. I can't honestly tell. It is a really good book. It's a smart book. It's the thing that's really special about it is how how realistic it is to the point where after after you kind of get your bearings with the story and you settle into it a little bit, you completely take for granted that it's plausible that there's a man who is psychic. It, the, the suspension of disbelief is effortless because it's rendered with such vivid clarity and realism. That's really the most impressive thing about the book is that at a certain point I actually got a little bit bored with the book just because it, it operates on this one conceit, this one science fiction conceit or fantasy conceit and then the rest of the story is totally mundane. It's this human drama. But that conceit just recedes kind of, not into the background, but it's so seamlessly integrated into the into the actual narrative of the book that you forget that you're reading science fiction, which is pretty wonderful. So I definitely recommend the book. I, again, don't think that it's his finest work. Uh, that sounds derogatory, but it's not. I just, Literally, there are books that I've read from him that are better. The one specifically that I want to recommend over it is this one, which happens to be the same actual edition, the same font here. It's The World Inside, which is not one of his better known books, which is not saying a lot because that's the only one that people know about really, Dying Inside and maybe Magipore Chronicles and maybe Nightwings. But, you know, that's, that's the, the hit. And then this is not even a B track. This is like a, a D or an E track. This I, I read in one sitting. This is much more hardcore science fiction than Dying Inside. It's a more interesting story. Uh, now that I think of it, actually sexually, even more sexually explicit than Dying Inside. And I've, I talked about this in another video, but if you're curious about Silverberg, Dying Inside would not be a bad place to start because it gives you a, a sense of, of like his writing style and, and his kind of flavor. And if you like that, I would read this one next, The World Inside. And I am gonna be setting up an Etsy shop. So this, this book, this specific individual book will actually be for sale fairly soon. Uh, so I'll let you know when that happens. And look, I got the read, I got the, the, the obligatory booktuber background. I'm a real boy now. I can show you how incredibly smart I am with all of my books that I have mostly not read. So, uh, see you soon.